Hello everybody, this is Tekka. It has been a long time since I've taken a look at this distribution right here. This is Ubuntu Budgie, and this is their new 21.10 version. Now, obviously based on the name, this is just one of the many flavors of Ubuntu, but they're using one of my favorite desktop environments, and that is the Budgie desktop. The Budgie desktop is the one that was built for the Solus project. It is a fantastic desktop environment. Uh, the main differences between it on this uh, Ubuntu flavor and the kind of official version over on Solus or the official configuration is overall you'll see the version on Solus just to be a lot cleaner, more of a kind of Windows-esque layout, while this one ships with more of a, a Mac OS style and there's a couple other different things in this Ubuntu flavor that makes it pretty cool. And on this homepage it features some of the things that are in the distribution such as some hot corners, you have your weather widgets, and a whole bunch of other things. Now if I go over to their blog, this is where we can see some of the uh, change log and new features for that 21.10 release. Uh, if you've been looking at the Ubuntu 21.10 release, the primary change is the addition of GNOME 40. Uh, this one does not have GNOME 40 because it's not GNOME. Uh, granted, the Solus project and with that budgie is going to be uh, slowly shifting away from GTK. I'm going to leave a blog post down below if you're interested in learning more about that. But looking specifically at this, they have a new Raspberry Pi image. They're using a new version of the Budgie desktop and they have a Windows 11 layout. And if you've uh, seen any of the other videos on this channel, you know I am definitely a fan of distributions that ship with layouts. So I'm excited to check that out. They have a window shuffler that will automatically auto arrange windows across multi-monitors and workspaces. They have another one, which is the uh, Budgie CPU temp applet. So that's really nice if I'm uh, in any GNOME desktop environment. Uh, I ha usually have an applet up in the top bar telling me my CPU temperatures. They have bug fixes and being that this is Ubuntu and they are uh, going with GNOME 40, this distribution is following suit at least in integrating GNOME 40 and GNOME 41 applications respectively. And then if you go on they have a whole bunch of different bug fixes and things like that. But with that said, let's go ahead and actually dive on into the system. So this is the first look that you get and kind of like I mentioned it's a Mac OS style. Down here they have a little dock which is using Plank for that. If you go over here, this is your uh, menu where you can access all your different applications. So you see here, if I kind of shuffle through these, some of the things that are included, they have all those bungee links. They have backups, some games. If I open up the calendar, I'm pretty sure that this is an example. We got a little uh, graphical thing there. It's probably because it's in VirtualBox, you wouldn't see that if you were uh, using this on hardware. But if we go over here, go to about calendar, you can see that this is GNOME calendar 41. And with that, I would like to note that they are not using the GNOME file manager. Go over here, give this a right click, go to about, they're using Nemo as their file manager or file explorer. And if I do remember correctly, Nemo is the uh, file explorer that ships with uh, Cinnamon. And honestly, Nemo is always a uh, fairly decent choice. Now, if we go ahead and shuffle through here, they have a bunch of other, your typical stock applications. You have your firmware selection, Firefox is included. They have all the LibreOffice suites. They have maps, menu editor, a couple other games. They have their software center. Here is where you can get your Plank preferences. They have screenshot utility, software updater, a bunch of the stuff you'd expect in either Ubuntu or Bungie. Now with that, I do want to open up my terminal real quick. So let's go to term. It looks like they have the uh, Tilix terminal, so that's very nice. Now let's do our typical NeoFetch, see if they have it. They did not, so I'm installing both of that and HTOP real quick. There we go. Uh, you can see, just like with the version of Ubuntu, we are running the 5.13 kernel. We're running Bash, 1800 packages. Uh, we're using just about a gigabyte of RAM, and I did check when we first booted this up. We do have Firefox running right now. So if I go ahead and close this out, for example, and let's go ahead and run HTOP, you can see the memory consumption at the moment is at 635. So a very impressive resource consumption, especially if you're somebody with like four gigs of RAM, uh, you're gonna be able to run this just fine. And they have Raspberry Pi images, so it's probably gonna run fairly decent on a Pi. So with that, one thing I really wanted to check out is the layout switcher. So if I go in here, I'm not sure what the application is called. I've Never really checked it out, but here we have the Budgie themes and layouts. 
So here it looks like we can switch our appearance or our desktop layout. So we have some simple themes. So we have Mojave. So if you want that really Mac OS style, we have Material Design, Ocure or Ogure Bungie, which that's a wonderful theme. We have White Sur, a lot of Mac OS inspired things here. But for example, let's say I wanted to go ahead and install this one. So let's click down. You could apply just the theme, just the fonts, just the icons or apply makeover. So I'm going to check this and just see how easy it is. Uh, did it switch? I think it might have switched. Yeah, it did switch. Cool. So if we open up files, for example, we are now running this theme. This is a beautiful theme. So I'm going to keep this for the rest of the video. And let's check out these desktop layouts because it said here they have a new 11 style layout. So that's what that is right there. Uh, additionally, we have the default Ubuntu Classic right here. So let's apply this one, and this is probably the style I'm more familiar with. So you could get that more classic style drop down with all the categories right here. Uh, we have Redmond, which this looks like a, if I just apply that real fast. Okay, so this brings back the uh, bottom taskbar, which is familiar in the original uh, stock version of Bungie. And if I open that up, you can kind of see what that is looking like here might look a little bit different depending on what theme you have applied. Uh, we have traditional bungee, which this is actually what it's supposed to look like, I'm fairly certain. So if I open that up, you can kind of see what that looks like. And yeah, this is stock. So if you do prefer the stock look, it's fairly easy to switch to this. And then we have our little uh, pull out with our applets and notifications and all that. Additionally, we have this one called the one. So this is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and apply that. It uh, looks like it gives us kind of a Ubuntu-esque, like trying to give us the stock version of Ubuntu, but within this uh, budgie environment. So that's kind of interesting. But for now, let's go ahead and just go with the uh, default Ubuntu bungee for the rest of this video here. So that overall, this is really nice. I do, like I said, I love it when these distributions have really easy layout switchers. Um, especially a lot of these, how they're configured is something you're probably gonna want. So it's gonna save you some work. And depending on what you're feeling like, it's really easy just to go and hit apply layout. So that is a very nice addition to this. And it's a good thing I went back because it took us to the Budgie welcome. So this is what you're gonna see the very first time you boot into your system. Here you have introduction features getting started. If I hit features, for example, it's gonna go ahead and uh, give me a rundown of most of the stuff that's going on in our system, including some of the productivity applications, entertainment applications, and some other things. If I go over to introduction, generally this gives us just a overview of what open source is and what the main base distributions are. And yep, you can see here we have Nemo, LibreOffice. Uh, it's using the GNOME Software Center. And then here's our rundown on open source, which is beautiful. Going under getting started, this is probably gonna give us things like updating. Yep, see updates and extras, drivers. So really nice interface for if you're just getting into this and you could just explore this completely and get a really good layout of the things you're probably gonna to want to do when you first boot up your system. So let's go into the Bungie desktop settings because this is a lot of the stuff here and we have style and this is probably what the uh, layout switcher is primarily focusing on changing, including plank down here. Under desktop, we have desktop icons so you can uh, show the home directory on your desktop if you'd prefer things like that. Fonts, Raven, this is the, uh, if I slide this out, this right here is Raven. So if I wanted to, like let's say I wanted this to show up on the left for some reason, you could switch that. I'm gonna go automatic. The default just makes more sense to me. But this is cool, It'll open up your calendar, your notifications like we said, but there are other things you could do with it such as monitor your, uh, the, your sound, your audio. It's really easy to go in and switch your different audio inputs per device, which is really nice for GNOME, you'd have to get a whole separate extension to be able to do that. And then here is where you can enable or disable some of those settings within Raven. So then we have some window settings, which is the typical things you'd expect, messing with your title bars and things like that. Under panels, we have our top panel. So this is where we can probably go ahead, yep, applets. So let's go ahead and add some. So this is what we currently have. Let's go ahead and hit add applet and see, let's add that weather one. That's one that I would really want. So we have a weather show here. So let's go ahead and add that applet. So now if I go up here and click on it, it's gonna give us our weather. Now this, I'm not sure how it's pulling my location. That's, is that fairly accurate? Yeah, that's fairly accurate. If I give this a click, oh, so, so apparently I have the same uh, weather as London at the moment. So let's go ahead and shift that over to uh, Cheney, Washington. Give that a search, Cheney, Washington. There we go, we should have the right thing selected. So let's go ahead and add another applet. This is one thing that was on that uh, 
what some of the things that they're proud of and added in this latest version we have the window sh uh, shuffler which will play place windows in predefined layouts so if i go ahead and add that it added it over here oh so this is nice this is kind of like the uh in windows if you right click the uh maximize button it's going to bring up something like this so i can toggle this over here toggle this over there so this is a very nice uh, addition to this. I'm loving this. And you can see when I added that weather thing, it added it here as well. I'm assuming you could probably move this around. So I'm not too sure how to move these around. A quick Google search would probably fix that. So I'm just gonna ignore that for now. But this, th this thing's super cool. And if we go into settings here, it looks like we can, uh, we can edit our applet settings, which is nice. Applet popover content. So if I just hover over it, so I don't even need to click it really. It looks like there are 10 different layouts in here that we could go ahead and choose from. That one's super cool. So then we can pop this in the middle. It's not gonna change because of the uh, style of applet that it is, but we could throw that down there. Uh, can't resize these because these are settings windows, but having some terminals open and a web page in the middle, that would be something that's a, a pretty cool layout. Uh, that seems to be the primary gist of it. This is a fantastic distribution. The customizations of this desktop environment, which in its core, Budgie is just a simple, uh, modern, easy to use desktop environment. And they've really uh, added some things to make this cool. Of course, there are applets and you could get a lot of these in just the stock Bungie over on Solus. But I do like what the Ubuntu team has done. And if you're somebody who prefers that Ubuntu base, that, uh, staggered uh, scheduled releases instead of a rolling release distribution and you want to play around with this desktop environment uh it's very easy and as we saw we could just go over into uh, layouts and simply go down go to desktop layouts and then we could go ahead and apply that uh where to go there it is traditional bungee and be in the kind of the uh, layout and look that the uh, solace team moderately expects out of their desktop environment so with that said, I'd love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mack, Kyle, Timo, Anthony, Sledgehammer, and Chris Curtis. You guys are some of the top tier Patreon supporters, and I do thank you very much for that. And big thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. If you are interested in supporting the channel, I go ahead and hit the join button down below to get extra emojis and things like that. Or head over to Patreon and support the channel over there. Uh, our Patreon supporters and YouTube members have recently gotten access to some early benchmarks for a video that's going to be coming out after, well, a couple days after the Fedora 35 release, uh, comparing Windows 11 benchmarking with Ubuntu, which the results are not surprising, in my opinion. So like always, anything I referenced in this video is going to be linked down below so you can check out get some more information, including that blog post on switching away from GTK, download links to Bungie, and my review of using Solus for 30 days will all be linked down below or hit the eye to get some videos. With all that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.